Why does creating art feel so hard and complicated? Dear Creative Mind, this is the question that we're going to explore in this episode. And I want to remind you that you're not blocked. There are just knots in your creative process and they can be untangled. And also you're not stuck. You're just committed to certain patterns because they serve a purpose. And that means you can unlearn them and support yourself in more helpful ways. So let's explore these creative knots together. Dear Creative Mind, welcome. This podcast is a space I created for us to explore the depth, textures, and intricacies of our creative mind. My name is Pascal, and I'll be your guide, helping you navigate your rebellious path. I know our creative mind sometimes gets lost in the maze of our imagination or sidetracked by the stories of our inner critic. On this podcast, you'll find grounding meditations to soothe your mind, coaching notes to help you find more focus and flow, and conversations with other creatives to inspire you in the hopes of helping you better understand and take care of your whole creative self. I really do hope you enjoyed this episode. Maybe you've heard of the term creative block before. So it's that frustrating feeling when we cannot access our creativity or we can't quite paint, sing, write the way we used to and we feel unmotivated to start anything or finish what we're working on as if there's this thick wall between us and our creative self. So something does feel blocked. But personally... I don't like using this way of illustrating the feeling because it puts us in a helpless position. And for me, words matter. You're not blocked. You're not stuck. I prefer seeing it as a creative knot, so something we can untangle. And I feel it's a truer image because oftentimes we get on the other side of that sticky feeling by using softness, not force. And the idea of a block, um, for me at least, it implies the notion of using force to destroy it or get unstuck from something rigid. And when we choose to see it as a knot, it helps us remember that when this feeling happens, we have to slow down, we have to really focus, and we have to find the root cause of that knot. And then when we do, we can gently pull on the thread and it just untangles itself. So just like you would do when there's a knot in your necklace, you cannot really untangle it with force or rushing through the process of untangling that knot. It really requires you to use some gentleness and some focus. And it's the same for the creative challenges that we face in our life. So what I want to do with you today is just share some of the common obstacles or creative knots that we often go through as creatives. Um, And I'm doing that in the hopes that you can feel less alone in the emotions that you may be feeling right now, but also to help you identify what is happening for you, what is holding you back from making progress. And I also want to offer you some questions to reflect on. Um, And you can do so right now as you listen, or you can save the episode for a journaling session. So I'm going to walk you through eight uh, challenges or creative knots that we typically experience. But by all means, this is not the ultimate list of challenges on the creative path. And I would be curious to hear which ones resonate with you the most. And if you've experienced something that I'm not going to mention, I would love to hear from you. And I also want to say that this is based on my personal experience as a creative, what I've observed uh, with clients, with friends, um, and it might be different for you. So again, I just want to help you become more aware of what's going on, and I might eventually record another episode to dive deeper into each of them, help you understand the root cause, help you find solutions. But for now in this episode, we're just exploring. And if ever you feel called to investigate this a little further, you're more than welcome to book a session with me. 
you can do so at dearcreativemind.com. Uh, and I offer a 45 minute session that is actually a great fit for this um, to help you identify a pattern, understand where it comes from in your specific case, and then find solutions that work for you. So let's get into those creative knots. And the first one I want to bring to your attention is indecisiveness. And not that there's a specific order to those knots, uh, but I wanted to talk about this one first because. It happens quite often that I'm coaching a client who comes to our session feeling blocked when in fact they're just struggling to make a decision. So either deep down they already know the answer or maybe they still have two options. They're like in this limbo kind of place. Um, But either way, they're scared of making the wrong decision. They don't trust themselves with the consequences of that decision. Or maybe they don't have enough clarity on their creative identity, their vision, their values, to be able to make a decision that feels right for them, that feels true and aligned. So what they do is they go back and forth on a question and they never really make up their mind because this space feels safer than taking action on that. So in their mind, in our mind, when that happens, We feel like we're blocked or or something is unclear when, in fact, if we were to listen deep down, we would probably already know the answer, but we'd realize that we're just afraid to commit and to make a decision and we maybe we struggle to trust our ability to deal with the consequences. And these consequences can be many things. It can be the fear of failure just as much as it can be the fear of actually succeeding. It can be the fear of being rejected or judged. Or it can also come from the other creative knots that we're going to explore today. But a question to ask yourself right now is, are you avoiding making a decision? Could this be creating this feeling of being stuck? Do you already know the answer? And do you trust yourself with what's going to come after making the decision? The next creative knot I want to talk about is perfectionism. So I've talked about perfectionism on the podcast before. I'm going to leave a link in the show notes if ever you want to learn more about this and listen to that previous episode. And it's also most likely not the last time that I'm going to talk about that on the podcast because it's a pattern a lot of us experience at some point or another in our creative life, or life in general. And we face that creative knot when we hold very rigid and impossible standards for ourselves that we obviously cannot meet because they're super vague, or as I said, they're impossible. And then we're stuck in a loop of never feeling like we're enough, we're being enough, or doing enough which is terrible for our self-esteem. And then we can never really find the courage or the motivation to start something new or take a risk or go after something we want because we cannot deal with the pressure and the heavy feeling of never being enough. And we have thoughts like, well, if I'm not going to be the best at it, if I'm not going to master this new technique in a month or be as good with this as I am with another thing that I'm great at, then why even bother? And it's not so much about being perfect. I think that's a misconception uh, because there's no such thing as being perfect. But we tend to put so much pressure on ourselves to achieve a certain standard and also achieve it with ease that eventually as you know time passes our body our heart can already know and can already see the pressure that's going to come and we don't bother starting anything anymore and i've shared that in the previous episode uh the one i was talking about perfectionism last year uh and if that resonates with you i would really encourage you to read the work of Brene brown if you haven't already Um, But perfectionism is a protective mechanism that we use because we think it's going to shelter us from shame, rejection, failure. And we believe 
if I can achieve this level of excellence, then I won't be judged. I won't be rejected. I won't have to deal with the shame. So if that resonates with you right now, a question to ask yourself would be, what do I expect of myself for the project that I'm working on or for my business this year? Is there space for joy? Is there space for compassion? Next on my list of creative knots is procrastination, which I've also shared about in the same episode I mentioned because I explored perfectionism and procrastination together. For me, they come hand in hand most times. And you can see procrastination as a symptom of perfectionism, actually. Because when we're afraid that we're not going to meet our impossible standards, we tend to avoid the task. Either we tend to avoid starting the task or getting to the next step of that task or that project. Often that looks like doing anything but the task that we're afraid to do. And often that task is the most important one. That's the task that's going to move things forward for you or help you get closer to something that's important to you. But we get busy with a million other things that don't really matter as much because they're easier and they're not threatening our self-esteem. So the thing a lot of us tend to do when we experience procrastination is to try to find a time management system which for me is also some kind of procrastination strategy and a symptom of perfectionism because we can get lost in an endless loop of research and testing to find that right and perfect system. But I want to remind you that even with the best system in the world, which I don't think exists because it needs to be based on you, even with this imaginary tool that helps you boost your productivity, if perfectionism and procrastination are not addressed on an emotional level, if we don't do the inner work to understand the root cause of that and we don't break the pattern, this system is not going to do much for us. There are always tips and tools that can help, of course, but I would really encourage you to dive deeper also. So a question that you may want to ask yourself here if ever you resonate with procrastination, am I truly too busy or am I busy avoiding what I really need to do? The next creative knot is around people-pleasing. So putting other people's needs before our own and struggling to say no. And I also want to put our need for external validation in there. So seeking for approval kind of molding yourself into what other people expect from you or what you think they expect from you. And maybe we don't have any boundaries. Maybe they're very leaky. Maybe we're afraid to set them. But what we do is that we constantly go through that self-betrayal pattern until we get frustrated or even confused about who we are anymore and what we truly want. We're so used to giving and giving and giving and saying yes to everything and being some kind of chameleon that we lose our essence along the way. So if that resonates with you, I would encourage you to think about, do you know where your boundaries are and you respect them? Next is imposter syndrome. So doubting your abilities, thinking you're not good enough yet, you don't have enough knowledge or the right certification, maybe you feel like a fraud or that people are not going to take your art seriously. So when that happens, we end up working too much to compensate for the lack that we perceive. So maybe we get lost in research, we take on like a lot of courses, we overgive to our clients, And as you can start to see now, these knots are often interconnected because when you feel like an imposter and you tend to overgive, then it could be linked to people pleasing. It could also stem from that feeling of not being enough that comes with perfectionism. And it can also become why we procrastinate or again, why we tend to people please. So a question for you here is, 
how do you not want to be perceived? And how does that affect your creative growth? Another creative knot is our free-spirited nature and everything that comes with it. And I'm obviously not sharing that to tell you something is wrong with you because there's nothing wrong with you. The previous knots that I shared about were mostly protective patterns. And this one has to do with your identity, your nature. So if I take back my example of a knot and a necklace, there are certain materials that never get tangled and other ones that always seem to have knots. So our very nature can sometimes make us more prone to certain knots. So for example, if we're attached to being free-spirited, it just makes it more challenging to stick to a structure. If we view ourselves as rebels, we might also you know, end up rebelling against our own structures, our own habits that we tend to want to try to put in place. Our own imagination can also create knots. This is a gift. It's what makes us creative, but it can also make us, you know, imagine end of the world scenarios or our sensitivity. This is essential to be able to perceive like the subtleties of the world and use it in our art, but it can also contribute to feeling drained around people or sounds or, or, smells or struggle with depression or anxiety. So a question I want you to ask yourself is, how can I use my creative mind to my advantage? And what parts of it do I need to just accept? And the last creative knot that I want to bring to your attention, or rather knots, are the many stories and the myths that we learned about being an artist. So that comes from social conditioning or some stories that we have been told. And some of the stories that can create those knots in our path can be around hustle culture and the glorification of being busy and working hard and struggling. It can also be tied to the image society promotes around success. So having like one specific image of what success should be. Um, It can also be the idea of instant gratification. So we tend to believe that we're supposed to get immediate success with something and that if ever we don't, that it's a failure or we should just throw it away and start again. And then we end up giving up on something the moment right before it would have succeeded. Or if we look at some myths around being an artist... There's the famous starving artist, so artists cannot make money, it's a risky path. There's also the struggling artist, so we need to go through constant pain to create. There's also the myth of being the loner artist or being messy or many other stories that we tell ourselves and that can just be at the root cause of those challenges. So ask yourself, What stories have you been told about being an artist? And how does it affect your ability to thrive as a creative? So I'm going to end this episode here, but I would love to hear from you if ever you want us to dive uh, deeper into a specific knot. Um, If you want us to explore some of those stories together, I would love for you to let me know. And in the meantime, this is always something we can explore Uh, through one-on-one coaching so you're welcome to reach out and book a session and I would also love to know which of these knots you've experienced before where you feel it comes from and what are some consequences of staying committed to those stories because they really are just stories thank you so much for listening to this episode and I'll see you very soon Thank you for having this conversation or meditation with me today. And because it is a conversation, you're always welcome to reach out and let me know what came up for you. If this episode felt supportive, please share it with a friend and take a quick minute to leave a rating and a review. It means the world to me when you support the podcast. And if you're curious about working with me as your private coach, you can learn more at DearCreativeMind.com. That's also where you can find more resources to support you 
and also join our monthly gathering, The Creative Playground. Thank you so much for being here today and we'll speak again very soon.